Okay, if everybody's ready, we'll go ahead and get started um, with the position paper. Each year, uh, the PPNL committee, we work with, uh, with Martina and our lobbyist, Diana, and we put together a document that kind of outlines our uh, advocacy goals and bills that we support or, that we, or we oppose. And, but more importantly, to introduce initiatives uh, that we would like to introduce. Uh, this first slide gives you an idea of what a position paper looks like. Uh, this is the document that uh, we use to communicate with the legislators and, it, uh, and what we are advocating for. Now, you can't read that, but that's okay. I believe you'll all have a copy of that. That's just to show you what it looks like. And based on what the Senator just said, we may need to figure out a way to get that back down to one page. Um, now let's talk about what's in it this year. First, we have an overview of uh, the Corona night uh, COVID-19 bill that's affected uh, school food service. Uh, it's HR 133, the, the federal stimulus bill. And it uh, distributed the funds to the states. Um, food service is, is talked about in there. Uh, as again, we just heard from Senator Monford, we've got to go with our, to our superintendent to make sure that school food service gets their fair share of those funds and uh, with that uh, work. And you've got the, the contact down there if you wanna do more research on that. Next slide, please, ma'am. Um, and again, we, uh, we wanna ensure food, uh, these are some of our initiatives, but our first initiative is to make sure that, uh, I'm gonna maybe repeating some of this, uh, that we stay, uh, keep us as essential workers for getting the COVID vaccination uh, and we don't lose sight of it. As, as I'll go back to what Senator Monford said, because he said a whole lot of good things that, you know, we got to make sure we keep ourselves, our employees up there in the priority with the, in the eyes of the superintendent and uh, stay on board with them. Uh, the second is the school breakfast supplement funding. We want to maintain that at last year's level. Uh, you all know the, the trials and tribulations of the meal counts have broken or fallen off and we do not not want to have to uh, take a big cut in the breakfast supplement. And um, we want to continue the state allocation of uh, funding to, to that we have the state match for the federal funding. And uh, we don't want somebody to start playing around with that when the legislature starts looking at their budget shortfall. So those are our current initiatives. Now, Jess, if you can give me the next slide. Tim, do you see that F, the R, do you see HB 517? Yeah, there? okay, yeah, I got it. Okay, um, HB 517, uh, this was just introduced last Thursday. So uh, we were reacting on Friday to try to get this done. There is no Senate companion. Uh, and just for those who might be new to this, if a bill doesn't have a Senate companion, the odds are it's going to die. But there's still a little time for them to uh, to find somebody in the Senate to uh, introduce a companion bill. Um, this goes back to the same thing that we hear, uh, providing meals regardless of their ability to pay or unpaid meal charges, uh, prohibiting meals from being disposed of. I, I hope we've gotten away from grabbing a meal from a child in the line and turn around, throw it in the trash. Uh, I, I think we've gone over that several years now and have, have hopefully solved that problem. But as the Senator mentioned, one irate parent calls based on what their kid told them and it may or may not be based in fact. And so a parent called this uh, state representative from Orlando and is trying and she introduced this bill um, again, I've got my own views. I'd love to publish something that shows the deadbeat parents that don't provide the funds in a news article and, and all, but, uh, you've all got your programs. I think most people, as far as I know, at different districts, you provide alternative or you provide a meal, let them run up a charge for several meals. And then you provide an alternative meal, and some don't even do that. Some just continue to give them the meal as they try to try to do this. Uh, so we are monitoring this, and uh, once we the bill filing closes, we'll know whether there's going to be a Senate companion where this goes. 
Okay, that right now, strangely enough, and this is this is a really strange session. That's the only bill that impacts food service that's been has been introduced. Uh, I think probably the legislators are all focusing on the budget and COVID and and trying to deal with that. And so, uh, if things change, we will certainly keep everybody abreast. Uh, but at the moment, that's the single bill. So um, with that, I think it's time uh, to take a short break. We've got, already gotten ahead of ourselves. That didn't take that long. Uh, but we're going to hear from our first sponsor, Peterson Farms. And uh, with that, uh, if you can show, I believe, show the video. The Peterson Farms family of companies, collectively known as Peterson Farms, is a group of fruit processing, storage, transportation, and support companies located in Shelby, Michigan. Peterson Farms is a market leader of processed fruit in the United States and the largest eastern U.S. frozen fruit and fresh cut apple processor. We specialize in the processing of fresh cut apples, frozen fruits, which include apples, blueberries, tart cherries, sweet cherries, and peaches, and specialty dried fruits. Peterson Farms receives raw product from over 500 farm families in North America and operates within facilities of 1.4 million square feet on a campus of 1,000 acres. Peterson Farms strives towards maintaining a strong relationship with our growers, sustaining a comfortable and safe atmosphere for our employees, and producing the best possible product for our customers at competitive pricing. The Peterson Farms process begins with the harvesting of fruit from Good Agricultural Practices, or GAP, audit approved growers throughout the United States and Ontario, Canada. In order to maintain a high level of quality fruit, members of the Peterson Farms field team work directly with growers throughout the year. During harvest, members of the field team are also responsible for coordinating the timing of each grower's harvest, which helps to maximize fruit quality and production efficiencies. Once the raw fruit arrives on site, it is immediately graded and then either transferred into the appropriate storage facility or delivered to a plant for processing. Cherries, blueberries, and peaches are temporarily stored in cold storage while apples are stored in controlled atmosphere or CA rooms. The purpose of the CA rooms is to slow down the ripening process of the apples. This is done by reducing the room's oxygen and carbon dioxide levels and introducing nitrogen which then puts the apples to sleep. When removed from CA storage, the apples look and taste much like they did on the tree. The Peterson Farms Fresh Plant, which operates year-round, specializes in the processing of fresh apple slices. The fresh process begins with apple boxes being submerged into a water-filled dump tank. The apples are then water transferred to the peeler slicers, sorted for defects using an optical sorter, and submerged into Nature Seal, which is a combination of calcium and vitamin C to maintain freshness. The apples are then bagged, boxed, palletized, and shipped across the United States. The Peterson Farms applesauce process begins by blending apples to get the proper color, consistency, and taste. The apples are washed and undesirable objects such as sticks and leaves are removed before entering the Bertoki process. The Bertoki is a fully automated, touchscreen controlled system that turns the apples into sauce. Stems, seeds, and skin are separated out through cold extraction, and the sauce is sent through a closed-loop pasteurization process to ensure both quality and food safety. Next, the sauce enters the kettles in 2,000-pound batches where all natural colors, flavors, and vitamin C is added per customer requirements, repasteurized, and sent to the cup filler. Also fully automated and touchscreen operated, the cup filler, or auto prod, fills cups at a rate of 390 per minute and as much as 400,000 cups per day. Lids are automatically placed on the cups, and sensors detect the proper placement. They then receive two heat stamps to ensure that each one has a quality seal. Once filled and sealed, the cups are discharged at a temperature of greater than 180 degrees to ensure a safe product. Between product runs, a fully computerized clean in place or CIP process is ran to ensure the sauce cups are filled in a clean, sanitary environment. The fully sealed cups are then x-rayed to check for foreign material overfills or underfills. Once sealed and checked, each cup enters a water chiller to bring the temperature of the cup down. They are air dried and sent through a camera detection system to look for wrinkles or leaks in the seals. Capable of packaging up to 420 cups per minute, the Douglas Case Packer mechanically packages according to each customer's specifications. 
Operators monitor the entire process to ensure that each case is completely accurate before being shrink-wrapped and prepared to leave the facility. Packages of Peterson Farms applesauce are now ready to ship, whether to our K-12 through customers or bulk food retailers across the 48 states. The largest variety of fruit being processed occurs at the Peterson Farms main plant. The main plant specializes in the individual quick frozen or IQF processing of apples, tart cherries, dark sweet cherries, blueberries, and peaches. Each fruit has its own unique process prior to the IQF tunnel. The apple process begins with 850 pound boxes of apples being submerged into a water filled dump tank. They are then transferred to the apple peelers to be cored and peeled. Once peeled, the apples are sliced or diced and sorted for defects using a Tegra optical sorter and then transferred to the IQF tunnel. Tart cherries arrive for processing in 1,000 pound tanks filled with water. Each tank is dumped into a fresh water filled dump tank. The cherries are then ran through a destimmer, transferred through an eliminator for sizing, and ran through an optical color sorter to remove defects. Following the optical sorter, the tart cherries are pitted and then immediately ran through a pit detector. Once pitted, the tart cherries are transferred to the IQF tunnel. A dark sweet cherry process begins by dumping 500 pound boxes into a water filled dump tank which includes an antimicrobial solution. The cherries are then run through an eliminator to size according to customer needs, transferred through a destimmer, and sorted for defects using a Tegra optical sorter. Once sorted, the cherries are then pitted and ran through a pit detector. The pitted dark sweet cherries can then be kept whole or halved to meet customer specification and then transferred to the IQF tunnel. Blueberries arrive for processing in 30 pound plastic lugs. Each lug is individually dumped and then ran under a brush and through a vacuum which eliminates leaves and other foreign material. The blueberries are then destimmed, ran through a Tegra optical sorter to remove defects and then transferred to the IQF tunnel. Peaches begin processing by dumping 1,000 pound boxes into the line. The peaches are ran over rollers to remove excess material and then sized. Once sized, the peaches are sliced in half and the pit is removed. The peaches are then transferred through a caustic bath, which softens and removes the peel, and then ran under scrubbers to remove any remaining peel. After the peel has been removed, the peaches are ran through two Tegra optical sorters for the detection of whole or partial pits. Once sorted, the peaches are either sliced or diced to meet customer specifications and transferred to the IQF tunnel. Prior to the IQF tunnel, each fruit is transferred through a hydrovac to remove excess moisture and then transported through the IQF tunnel. While in the IQF tunnel, the product temperature is brought down to 15 degrees below zero and the product is individually bounced to freeze each piece of fruit. Once frozen, the product is once again sorted using an optical sorter and transferred to the end of the line for packaging. The product is bulk packaged into a variety of sizes, from 30 and 40 pound cartons to 1,000 and 1,500 pound totes. These containers are then shipped to the Oceana County freezer storage and stored until the product is allocated. Peterson Farms also specializes in the processing of 5 plus 1 tart cherries. The operation begins annually during tart cherry harvest and operates during the tart cherry season. Each bin of tart cherries is dumped into a water filled dump tank and transferred through an optical sorter for defects. They are then pitted and packed into 30 pound plastics. Each plastic contains 25 pounds of fresh tart cherries and 5 pounds of sugar. Oceana County Freezer Storage is a 612,000 square foot cold storage facility also located in Shelby, Michigan. OCFS is the largest single site commercial freezer in Michigan and has a capacity to store 160 million pounds. The storage rooms feature modern rack storage and can keep products at temperatures of negative 10 degrees. Located within OCFS is the Repack Center, which is a value added facility where products are customized for food service and retail applications. The Repack Center also enables Peterson Farms to do value added processing with products outside of our core commodities of apples, cherries, blueberries, and peaches. Here, the product is kept frozen and is repacked for customers' specified needs. The Repack Center also has the ability to package dried fruits, do blends, 
or create special cuts and styles to meet a customer's specific requirement. The juice plant at Peterson Farms allows us to use our fruits to their full capacity. By using the excess material that was created from processing of apples and tart cherries, the juice plant is able to take that material and create juice, cider, and concentrate for customers. At Peterson Farms, quality is of the utmost importance. Each facility at Peterson Farms is SQF certified, kosher certified, and organic certified. The role of the quality assurance team is to ensure that each product produced meets our customer specifications. Throughout the process, the quality assurance team ensures specifications are met through constant communication with the production team. This includes testing the raw fruit, sampling titration levels of processing aids, and grading the finished product. The Peterson Farms Research and Development Team meets almost daily to continue to look at opportunities to further enhance the quality of the products we produce. Peterson Farms has always understood the value of sustainable practices both as farmers and fruit processors. In November 2012, Peterson Farms became a zero waste to landfill company, meaning no waste produced ends up in a landfill. We were able to implement this program through the use of recycling all waste. The goal of Peterson Farms sustainability is to meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. At Peterson Farms, we strive to continue growing through our employees, our growers, and our customers. From farm to fork, Peterson Farms products are carefully processed to ensure that you and your customer receive the best possible product. Pete, would you like to add anything to that? Uh, yeah, I got a few words for everyone. Uh, first of all, good morning, everyone, and thank you for participating in today's uh, Legislative Action Caucus. Uh, my name is Pete Ryan, and I do represent Peterson Farms. I hope you enjoyed that video, that uh, short video. It gave a pretty, for the time frame, it gave a pretty in-depth uh, overview of the operation of Peterson Farms. One thing that I can tell you is that uh, that last segment about su sustainability, uh, we are very proud of that. and. Uh, and I, we feel like it just gives uh, an added value um, to uh, the products that we uh, serve um, in your schools. Um, but again, Peterson Farms is, is proud to sponsor this event again this year. Um, and you know, although we, we miss the personal interaction we normally enjoy during these type of events, it doesn't diminish the importance of today's meeting in an effort to be informed on the current events and needs of the, uh, of the School Nutrition Association. To say that this has been a, a trying time during the past year, I think you would all agree would be a huge understatement. Uh, with that said, I think that you should all take pride in the accomplishment that each one of you have experienced during this past year. Please know that your efforts and your sacrifices are noticed and certainly are appreciated by your industry members. This pandemic has created chaos to our system and changed the entire landscape of school food service. But collectively, you all have not only overcome, but excelled in providing safe, nutritious, and great tasting products for our students. And again, we appreciate that. You've heard me say this many times, but I'll continue to say it and sing your praises. Thank you for all you do. We are very proud of the way each of you go above and beyond to feed our students. We see your passion and your dedication that keeps you going. I would like to encourage you to keep doing what you do best and that is to love and provide for the students that you serve. Again, thank you. I appreciate this time to uh, speak with you. Um, I appreciate you viewing our short video. A uh, uh, few of you mentioned that it was like how that program, how it's made. And, and yeah, I love that program myself. But uh, again, thank you for all you do. <laughs>
thanks very much, Pete. Um, just just as a side, I really want you to change your name to Pete Peterson because that's why I signed instead of Ryan. But anyway, uh, we do appreciate the the all that you do for our association, both you personally and Peterson Farms. Y'all are a great partner and you help us do the things we can do for our members. So thank you again very much for that. 